All right, guys. It's day three, WrestleMania weekend, Los Angeles. I hope you can hear me. They got the music going loud up in here. We are at Effie's Big Gay Brunch 6 at the UCC. Uh, me and Marky were here last night for GCW versus DDT, and it was amazing. So I'm hoping tonight, or this morning, is gonna be a fun little party. I'm sure it will be. Um, hopefully it's PG enough that I can show you the highlights to it, but I guess we'll see. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Highlights coming. You have to push and hold before it's motion sensor. Mm, push and hold. We've been rolling. Sometimes it's too damn early for wrestling. It's too damn early to be gay. It was too early. Stop that. Brunch. What are you talking about, brunch? Oh, all right, all right. Effie. Hi, guys. Are loud. Hi, everybody. I don't want to go to drag brunch. I don't want to go to Effie well, brunch. Hi, everybody. Welcome it's too back early. to Wrestling With Boys. Even Effie was in a tracksuit in the beginning. It's day three of WrestleMania weekend. We had a very long night last night. And a pseudo early morning this morning for Effie's Big Gay Brunch. I got this shirt that says Effie Says Brunch. It's official merch for the event. Uh, this was the sixth Big Gay Brunch. Um, it's a GCW um, endorsed production, I guess you will. I mean, it's all the GCW producers and staff putting it on. But it's Effie's event. And it's specifically to highlight LGBTQ and non-binary um, uh, talent. So it's a very, very big gay wrestling event. And it's freaking awesome. I've been wanting to go to it for a long time. And uh, when I found out he was having it this weekend, that's what inspired me to look at what other, other shows were going on this weekend. <coughs> This was the sixth Big Gay Brunch, the first one that was sold out ever. Yes. Uh, I say I'm silly about it being early. As soon as you walk through the door, I see Pollo Del Mar. I see Dime Piece Perfect. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I just see all the characters. Everybody was running around. It was early. They had dance and parties that go in. Um... Surrounded by pop-up tables of merch. There was actual food. There was actual brunch. There was actual bar. As soon as I walked through those doors, I was like, I'm in. Let's go. We're here. It's every 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 color on the spectrum was in attendance, not just in the ring, but in the audience. And um, let's get into some drama before we get into the fun. So I did my intro for this video at the UCC. They had music going. It was kind of loud. Uh, I don't. I probably will put some subtitles with it before you see us here talking now. But I didn't do any more filming for the rest of the event for two reasons. The first reason being somebody else who is a wrestling vlogger had been trying to post some stuff daily, whereas I'm waiting till after the event to post everything. And Fight TV has not only removed his videos, but flagged him for copyright infringement. Some of you heard our review of uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling versus... Versus Impact. Versus Impact. Fantastic show. Available on Fight TV. And so they decided to uh, copyright strike and take it down from my YouTube channel. So you will not see it. Well, you will see the WWE Superstore. You will see clips and coverage on my Instagram, ArguMakeup.com, uh, or Nick Wayne's Instagram. Uh, so, but uh, YouTube is just not going to happen in, in clips and forms. So, yeah, the, so we decided to kind of take this one for fun. The the funsies. I do I do have an opinion. I do have an opinion. Um, I understand Fight TV is trying to make its money. It is a pay per view um, product. However, there seems to be a disconnect between the distributors, and the creators. When we got there, they immediately told us which hashtags they wanted us to use for our clips, for our gifts, for our photos, all that. But we had just experienced, you know, putting our stuff out there may not stay there, and it might hurt us later on with copyright hits. So it, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I don't have anything against Fight TV. I just kind of wish there was a little bit more of a connect between them and the creators because clearly 
these guys want their stuff seen. They want to pick up traction. They want to promote their brands so that you will go and pay for the pay-per-views. We weren't recording entire matches. We were just getting bits and pieces of cool spots and highlights here and there. Maybe we shouldn't post the results of some of these matches on video. Live and the learn. Re the results are up on Cage Side Seats instantly. Yeah. Uh, Sports Kita. Everybody's got the results instantly. Yeah. Um, I'm no dirt sheet, so I'm not worried about results. So that was the reason why I didn't initially start filming during this event. But it, I would say halfway through the first match, um, it became something else for me. I didn't want to be behind a camera. I didn't want to be behind a lens. I wanted to be in the moment because this was an event for us and you could really feel that you could really feel it from the from the talent and you could really feel it from the crowd and um i have to oh gosh address another horrible thing um just the night before unfortunately some of you might have heard that um giselle star one of the impact knockouts had a confrontation with steiner which steiner was it uh, it was Rick Steiner, and if you want to read Jericho's response here, you can. So, Steiner decided, and in the middle of WrestleCon, on the convention floor, to yell out uh, transphobic, transphobic, homophobic, and uh, racist slurs to Giselle Starr. Uh, nobody came to her defense, no other wrestlers said anything, no staff said anything. And she decided, you know what, if no one else is going to stick up for me, I need to stick up for myself. And she made a public statement about it. And it's just gross. Just absolutely gross. I can't believe... Uh, ugh. Anyway. If um, you're sitting at home wondering who we're talking about, it's exactly that. You, you've never bought a ticket to see this person. They don't work for anybody and they won't work for anybody. And they never put a butt in a seat and they ain't never beat anybody either. So, cheers to that. But still they run their mouth. Yeah. Here's Chris Jericho's for response. No, for no reason. And just J Chris Jericho for the win. He says to Celestar, hey, don't even worry about this. Rick Steiner has always been a bully and has gotten away with so much because he is a Steiner. Makes me laugh because I fell for the same BS uh, when he bullied me, Eddie, Chris, Oscar, Hoovy, etc. at World War III in 1997. I got your back, Giselle. And if Rick has an issue with this, I'd love to discuss it with him anytime. It's 2023, dude. Grow the F up. So kudos to Chris Jericho for saying something. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get a few more opinions out of this as the week goes by. There's still a lot going on right now that's distracting people from this. But um, I felt that Effie and GCW did a very class act job at not necessarily acknowledging this, but basically stating that it is not going to be tolerated at all with them. So, bravo GCW, bravo Effie, and I imagine Fight TV would take a similar stance because, you know, they like airing these guys, so. Uh, I have no idea what they'll do, uh, but the, there was a time where being a, a locker room bully was awesome it was like oh i'm the top guy i can bully being a prankster was awesome uh those times have been and those times were antiquated uh in you know 1997 so let's just you we're know, this... yeah we're moving on um kind of wish giselle was there today you know just to have her back like literally anyway let's move on to an amazing amazing show so, Effie came out in his tracksuit, like you said. He came out in his little tracksuit. It was cute. It was actually, fact, it was cute. <laughs> it, don't, it's my favorite look of his. It's, it was my really favorite. cute. Um, but yeah, he came out, he kind of talked about this and just said, hey, you know what? This is our sixth show. It's the first one that's been sold out. And he had some amazing talent lined up. Some that we knew were going to be there and some that we didn't know was going to be there. And let's get into it because it was fun as F. He was super cute. Um, he... He brought out... Do, do you remember who it was? Tex? Oh, Tex. Oh, Tex. Uh, Tex Green? No. Or Tex Gardner? Tex Gardner. Um, I don't know if Tex was a promoter or was a talent. But Tex was a woman wrestler from the 60s who decided she was tough as nails and wasn't going to take anybody's BS and came out in the 70s. 
And she said most promoters back then didn't really mind so long as she kind of kept it secret. So she said, you know, she did keep it secret when it was appropriate to do so. And if she didn't have to, she didn't. And she had a little career, you know, and paved the way for all these other LGBT and queer, I'm just going to say queer as a, a blanket statement, um, talent to come and, and show off their stuff. And uh, they got her up in that ring. She was done up to the nines in her suit. She had a cowboy hat, mm -hmm. rainbow, rainbow tie, tie, polished boots. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. If you had to pick out who was the, the, the lesbian wrestler, you'd go, ah, uh, <laughs> dang it, sir. But she, it was a very special moment. She was out now dressed up, still ready to throw down. Because, of course, they had to, we had to have an interruption moment. Oh, legend interrupted, legend interrupted. You know what was interesting, though? The moment was so profound. It didn't feel like an interruption at first. You thought it was a technical error. And then when you realize, no, wait a minute, this isn't some random song playing over the like, speakers. We're, we're not watching a documentary. This is still This an is someone's intro. intro music play. Yeah. So out came one AC Mack, who, despite his heelish ways, is quite accomplished. And he basically... <laughs> He basically came out there and told her, okay, she needs to go back to the old folks' home and get out his ring so he can get his match started and this, that, and the other. And Effie and Del Mar and Catch, they were over there trying to hold Tex back because Tex wasn't having none of it. She took her jacket off. She took her hat off. She was ready to throw down. She was trying to get him in the ring and he wouldn't have it. I think eventually at one point he got up on the apron. She gave him a one-two and he came a toppling down. <laughs> It was entertaining. It was uh, great. If you want to learn more about this, uh, Out in the Ring is a great documentary. Uh, Susan Tex Green. And when you Google it, you'll see her in a, all the pictures are full on cowboy hat, big smile, and ready to, you know, punch you in the nose. So that was how we kicked off. Legends. Legends, legends. at the show. Yeah, we even have gay legends. There you go. Um, yeah, it ended with them literally having to carry Tex out of the ring because she wanted to scrap all morning long. It was a good, it was a good pull <laughs> apart. Pull apart. <laughs> hey, let me at him. It was a good, good start. Good kick off to the show. So with AC, uh, AC Mac, sorry, already in the ring, uh, it was time to introduce his three other opponents for a three-way match, which consisted of uh, Richie Coy. Um, Richie Coy, I believe, had the flower tights which i thought were adorable <laughs> you came out in, a, in the flower dress right yes <laughs> strange little house dress i'm yeah. like somebody get that person out of the ring i was like oh no wait uh followed by honest john our um sexy self-proclaimed bisexual he was he was a hottie toddy little compressed muscle muscle kid with a old-fashioned singlet love that Hon honest john looked like a knot of rope yeah with a smile <laughs> And then, surprise, surprise, we had the one and only uh, Jai Vidal, uh, J-I, J-A-I, and the I stands for Impact, because he is with Impact Wrestling. And these four put on a great four-way. It was, it was all over the place. There were some hot spots for everybody. We knew who the heels were, J and AC, and we knew who the faces were, John and uh, Richie. And it was cute. Um... Although, I will admit, I don't remember who won. Oh, I do remember who won. Uh, AC cheated and won. <laughs> but, I mean, he was trying to fight Tex before the match even started, so what do we expect? Moving right along. It was a strange theme to this show, but, well, you'll see it. Yeah. Moving right along, we had... Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm reading... Look at how big my note is. It's tiny, so sorry if I... Mm. We had Devin Monroe versus uh, Kita Mufa. I think Kita Mufa, if I'm pronouncing that right, I might be pronouncing it utterly wrong. Uh, he's known as the key to pro wrestling. And he has a keyhole strategically placed on his wrestling gear, which is very enticing. And um, Devin was just fabulous. He was a Devo and a half. He came up in there dancing and twerking and just having a good old time. And they put it on a great match. They... <laughs> Very high energy.
energy. Very technical, too. Oh, yeah. And and let me tell you, the kicks, the clotheslines, the high flying. You know, you see, we all know what's going on here. All of these connected. Oh, I yeah. mean, these were, we were not far from the ring. Yeah. It was, it was, it was hard hitting and brutal. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a stiff match. Uh, it did unfortunately when um, end with Kita. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering his name, and I apologize. Uh, it unfortunately ended with Kita being a bit cheaty and winning, which is the second match to end in such two, a way. Two heels, one in a row. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. Then we move on to some uh, uh, wonderful ladies. We had Sandra Moon and Steph the Under. As Steph I said, Delander, Steph, yeah. Steph Delander. Steph Delander came in, and I believe she's from Australia. <laughs> she has a gorgeous accent, and <laughs> she she had a, she had some stuff to say about being at GCW. She clearly did not want to be at this big gay shut your mouth. But um, Sandra came in there and shut her up, shut her up, mouth up for us. So um, how did that one end? I feel like we had another heel victory. Was there another heel victory? I feel uh, like it was. A lot of people were using the, the thing that I sold out this show and all that. And I was kind of like, we, okay, we, we, we hear you, girl. We hear you. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, the show sold out because of her and her uh, alone. Ste Steph won, yeah. Yeah. Um, another, another heel victory. Three in a row weird at a queer match anyway then we but it was a lot of fun they went inside they went outside it was a good it was a good it interactive. was interactive it was and i, I liked the contrast in styles um yeah it was great it was great um next was one of the like um big names we had fred rossier 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 of wwe fame we all know he was the first wwe talent to come out openly and he was facing off someone I had discovered just slightly before this, one Karam. Karam is a big, big, muscular, uh, I believe he's of Persian descent. Um, and they put on, uh, I don't, I honestly don't think security was prepared for how the match started because it was fanfare. It was fanfare. This man knew these people wanted to get up close and personal with him. So Fred decided, we don't need to have a fight in the ring. We can just have the entire crowd form a circle, and we'll fight amongst them. Yeah, yeah, it was. He said, he said, let's go out amongst these. Like, I'm a man of the people. Let's go out amongst the people. And, oh, boy, here we go. Off to the races. We <laughs> We were on the other side of the crowd so we can get up close and personal, but I do know there was there was enough happening there for the fans to be happy that they were all up and you know, I'm I'm glad it was at the beginning of the match because if they were sweaty, them chops probably would have sent sweat all up in your face and I mean maybe some people like that. I don't know, I ain't here to judge. But they did end up back in the ring and they did some really impressive feats of strength. There was some technical wrestling. Karam was definitely painted as the heel. He was trash talking. He was angry. <laughs> and he wasn't really happy about being pantsed at one point. <laughs> he got into a position where Fred was down on the mat and was trying to roll him up in a schoolboy, I believe. And he couldn't get him over, so he grabbed a handful of... In the old Shawn Michaels moment, yeah. Yeah, a handful of trunks just came down, and they stayed down for a little while before he had the opportunity to pull them back up. Um, but it ultimately uh, ended with Fred picking up the victory. And then he got his hands on the mic, and he basically, you know, just wanted to say he was happy to be associated with an event 
for gay people by gay people. And then he gave the uh, mic to Karam, who, despite having been the heel for the entire match, said, you know, kind of emotionally, that this was the first time after being told because of what he looks like and because of what he does, that he was supposed to be a certain character and a certain person, that this was the first time he was able to be who he truly is. And I was in the audience trying to fight back tears whilst also searching for an engagement ring to buy him so I could propose to him. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a sight. It was a thing. It was another classic case of big meaty men slapping meats. Yeah, big meaty men slapping meats. All right, go, go do that. I don't know if you guys can hear old Rigel barking. I'm going to carry on. Uh, okay. You want me to pause? I'll pause. No. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. <laughs> we do bloopers. Big sometime. meaty men <laughs> slapping meats. Slapping meats. And, this, this, and touching and wholesome. This is probably going to get edited out. Uh, so, what happened next at our show? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even had nothing to drink, y'all. I swear. Okay. Next was a favorite of mine uh, Kid Bandit versus Sawyer. How do you say that? Sawyer Wreck? Oh, I, it's my handwriting. Sawyer Wreck. Okay. Um, interestingly, this was kind of cool for me because uh, my introduction to Kid Bandit was before they transitioned through AEW, big mainstream promotion. I hadn't been able to see them up close and personal in one of these smaller house shows. And if you don't know Kid Bandit, Kid Bandit is exciting and hardcore AF. But Sawyer was up to the challenge. And Sawyer is a tall drink of water. Um, <laughs> and uh, Kid Bandit is not very vertically uh, gifted. So it was, it was a little interesting matchup. But they, came, they turned out. They turned out. We knew it was going to be a hardcore match. When the first thing that came out of the curtain when Kid Bandit was announced, was a Keyblade from Kingdom's Hearts wrapped in barbed wire. Some stuff in my life. Never have I heard them announce on the mic to the house. <laughs> if the fight is coming your way, grab your SHIT and move. Yeah. Uh, some spots were hot spots where the, the, the dives were happening, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then other times it was just, this could be in your seat. So uh, perhaps maybe it was brunch. Maybe it was uh, <laughs> some people who haven't been to a pro wrestling show before. But this one... Uh, Almost started and ended in your seat in the crowd. Keyblades, barbed wire, shenanigans, scooters, the scooter moves, <laughs> Tony Hawk. There was crimson masks. This had everything. Not the longest match, but wild from bell to bell. Yeah, I think one of the crazier bits wasn't probably even planned, but you knew the barbed wire was weird because their hair kept getting caught in it, and then they would just kind of say, "Oh." Your hair is caught in this. I'm going to use this to build you around the ring. You know, it was great. It was, um, it was real. It was real and it was great. And <clears> I enjoyed <throat> watching both of them. Sawyer Wreck wins with a double choke slam. Oh, Another heel victory. Yeah, well, was Sawyer the heel? Oh, people were cheering for Kid. Uh, that that decides it for me. I will I will say I do think Kid was the um, fan favorite, but I don't feel like Sawyer was nefarious. So I don't know about really? that one. Okay. I don't know about that one. Okay. Um. 
Both Kid Bandit and Sawyer Wreck were available after the show with merch. And pleasant and lovely. Uh, now I'm going to switch the order a bit. Uh, the next match wasn't the next match, but it's the one I want to talk about. Um, it was Vipers versus Max the Impaler. And Max the Impaler was accompanied by one Amy Rose. I've been wanting to see Max the Impaler for a long time. Max is amazing, gifted, and I love their aesthetic. And they, their gimmick says they're from the Wasteland, the post-apocalypse, which we are associated with through other things. And, uh, oh, it was, it was a great match. Um, I think it was kind of keyed as, you know, oh, both of these people have been in AEW development matches before. Come see them in person. I did not realize Vipers was as short as she was. And I immediately thought, oh, this is going to be a squash. Max is going to squash her. But it wasn't. It was a good back and forth. It was a good give and take, and I was here for it. It was great. How do you feel about it? Uh, Vipress was dressed like old school demolition. So if they did look like the, the missing demolition member. Um, it was another wild one. This one was in your seat. This was. <laughs> chair it was in the ring uh slammed on the floor uh this one came with another queer quirky ending yes so vipers used her feminine wiles to get the upper hand once with max and then after the match amy rose decided to do the same to vipers which we were worried maybe was going to get Max jealous or what. We didn't really know the nature of everybody's relationship here. But it very cutely ended with Max deciding Vipers was one of them now. And I think they literally grabbed her and slung her over her, the shoulder and just marched her to the back. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was kind of like, you know, ding, ding. Instead of the way they shake hands and bow with all the other matches, they just made out and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. Well, the Maria. It was great, and I was I was really happy to finally be able to see Max um, in person. If you get a chance to see Max the Impaler, wild looking, crazy face paint. Uh, their merch includes severed little uh, doll heads on a keychain that are painted like a tiny Max. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Max's in ring aesthetic is easily movie ready. Yeah. Easily yeah. movie ready. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, after that, I want to talk about the East versus West match. This one, I was excited to see because we actually had friends in the match, but oh my goodness, it was piled high. Did I write down the names of all the talent? I'm pretty sure I did. Here we go. On the east side, representing the east coast, that is, we had Aaron Rourke, Ashton Starr, Becca, the E is a three, um, <laughs> Rico Gonzalez, and Dylan McQueen. Uh, Dylan McQueen, uh, some of you may have known, was signed with AEW for a little while, trained under Cody Rhodes, Nightmare Factory. One of the few developmental talent that actually got, like, in-ring music and graphics, and I think Cody escorted him out to the ring one time. Um, Becca and Ashton Starr are the team, or... Is that Aaron? Aaron Rorick and Aaron Becca Rourke. are two Boston-based professional wrestlers. So this was the East team. Yeah. 
Um, representing the West, we had Anton Voorhees, like Jason Voorhees, uh, The Shade, we had Abigail Warren, and then we had the tag team of Money Power Respect, Marco and what's Marco's tag partner's name? Oh, I'm, I feel like such a... What was it? Llama Mania. Yeah. Marco and Fabuloso Fabrico, Fabricio. Um, I mentioned before the LGBT pro wrestling fan group that we're a part of. Marco is one of the uh, creators slash admins of said group. So it was really nice to see him come down from San Francisco and uh, watch him. This match. Their, their team is Money, Power, Respect. That's, that's them. Yep. I nicknamed them the Elton Johns because they came out in the rhinestone Dodger uniform yep. that Elton John famously wore at his Dodger Stadium concert. Uh, I believe it was Bob Mackey. Duh. <laughs> uh, don't quote me on that. But... A more colorful assortment of humans in a wrestling match never existed. Uh, they came down with Poyle Domar, who was dressed like Wonder, Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, if you ever seen big Wonder Woman tattoo, um, so this one, this one was. I don't say circus negatively. This one was just every shape, size, color. It was a wacky one. It was great. <laughs> And it, I, I loved mean, every minute. There were spots where, like, you know, 90 pound Becca suplexed Abigail. There was, oh my gosh, uh, Del Mar took a power bomb. <laughs> In full drag, poor gal. Oh my goodness. Um, Money, Power, Respect did some really impressive tag team moves, and they're both big boys, so they were able to, you know, really utilize their strength in this one. They they are, if for, for all them old people watching, they are Earthquake and Typhoon. <laughs> yeah, they are the natural disasters <laughs> reincarnated uh -huh. as a couple Elton Johns. I'm that big. This, this one was, oh. <laughs> Sometimes we just see the same body types wrestle on WWE, not to get serious here, but this one had everybody type. Skinny people, little people, big mm -hmm. people, yep. people with bodies flying everywhere. <laughs> into the pool oh, I, wow. I wanted to see El Pollo Del Mar do a dive that's okay maybe next time um <laughs> this one had all all the shenanigans we cowboy had, hats oh just I think we had uh Dylan McQueen directing a lot of traffic for his team building up the most heat from the crowd 
We had Voorhees um, uh, really drawing the crowd in. He was up wrapped around the rope twerking. He was the one threatening to pull his pants down. <laughs> the time uh it was great it was great um no complaints at all it was a lengthy match everybody bought, uh, got a really good spot everybody got a really good bump like it was great it was just wonderfulness all around plenty of dives uh abigail stole this match oh, for me yes um and other than that if you get a chance to see uh let me let me find let me find dime pieces instagram <laughs> a very artistic instagram um, but it was it was quite see, perfect. Aaron one. If you are an indie fan, check out Perfect Aaron one. Very visual uh, performer. And then after this wonderful match was the main event, and I love this one. I love this one. This one was the team of Thrussy, which is Bussy, Effie, and Ali Catch, joined by none other than Dark Sheik. And they were facing Mason's Mercenaries. Uh, Mason's Mercenaries consist of Charles Mason, who is a very, very attractive straight man who came into this ring wearing a turtleneck, a gold chain, and some slacks. <laughs> Followed by Billy and who was his muscle? I forgot who his muscle was. That big uh, man. guy named Paro. A very angry looking viking of a human uh big leather pants that say power on back uh he took bumps he gave well, bumps well, <laughs> Don't jump ahead. Let me tell you about this match. Um, GCW does some storytelling, but a lot of times they don't need to. They have so much amazing talent. Seeing any iteration of them put together is just in and of itself a treat. But this match told a story, which I was not expecting. Mason came out, and then Mason forced Pero to drag Billy out. I do not know Billy's gimmick. But he was basically wearing overalls and a t-shirt, and he definitely did not want to be with Mason or Pero. And um, Mason made it very clear that he was in charge and that he owned him and he had to do everything Mason told him to do, including go out to this ring and insult Effie and everybody. Um, <laughs> one of the draws I, I liked about his, his heat uh, buildup was he said the only reason why uh, Big Gay Brunch sold out is because they finally hired a straight man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he pulled that one too. Uh, the, the guy playing Billy Dixon was great. It was very, um, uh, he was he was sad and downtrodden. You know, and it was get in the ring, do this, do that. This was a, it's all entertainment. It was a little cringe, but that means it's working. Mm -hmm. Um. And, uh, you know, see rich white man boss around the black man around. It was a little mm. But the story it told was fantastic. Uh, we all saw the turn coming. And so at that point, the smart, the smart mark is waiting for uh, Billy to have his comeuppance. Yeah, it was great. They, um, they put on some good spots. They had some... Oh, Allie. Allie. Allie got worked for a good half of this match. Kudos to her. They definitely singled her out, and she took it. She took all the bumps, all the bumps. She just, she got worked over for, like, the good first half of this match. And then they forced Billy to come in and, and hit her, and he didn't want to, and he did. And when he did, he felt terrible about it. And finally, uh, we started to see some good back and forth. Um... I don't remember the peril. I believe Pero was in peril. Good stuff. 
And uh, he went for the hot tag to Billy, who suddenly was ready for it. And at the last second, he ooh, decided to pull away, get off the apron. The crowd immediately loved Billy. It was an instantaneous turn. We might have saw it coming, but it didn't make it any more or less satisfying. And then from there, it just got wild. He he did the old school, like sometimes they say it's a T-Rex arm or the alligator arm all of a sudden, you know. Like, oh, uh, and he did the pullback, the crowd popped. Yeah. We knew it was coming, but I was still surprised by it because mm -hmm. I didn't know when it was coming. Um, it was fantastic. Uh, for For... If you saw all these shows, perhaps you thought maybe the DDT match was a little more shenanigans, a little less athleticism. Uh, Allie Catch made up for it in this one. There was just, it was brutal. Nobody took the day off. This was the main event. Uh, full crimson mask oh. for Effie. Chair shots, ladders. Oh, yep. they, did, they did the chair exchange. Uh, head shots. Did you stop that, Effie? You need your brain. Yeah. Um, and it was just it was just wild. One wild. one thing I want to point out, um, Mason Charlie Mason, um, he could have took it too far, being the straight guy here to run wild all over the queer group, and he 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 worked that to just just up to the line. There were points where he were he was all up in Ali's face and you felt uncomfortable by it because he was too close but then you realized oh that's because he was gonna bite her in the forehead not because he was gonna do something else inappropriate um i was never worried about Allie. no no i wasn't worried Allie about Allie. Wreck shit. it was it was <laughs> it was mason's like demeanor his intent on everything was just skeezy and it felt gross and that's what he was supposed to do and even at the end of the day i want him to because, you know, he did, he did his job, and he did it well, and he looked good while doing it. Um, yeah. Oh, there was a bit where finally, finally, Dark Sheik and Ali Catch were able to square off with the boys. And Ooh, right when they did... Dark Sheik was just Sheik in this match. Oh, that's they right. They came out that's right. in rainbow gear. That's right. So Sheik was just Sheik, came out full... They were almost more a little more uniform with their pink gear, mm -hmm. and they had rainbow gear... And I was like, oh. It was. There, it was, it was like, this is like the exclusive action figure, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's three of one and then one of the other. From, uh, from our perspective, it was it was brilliant. I wish, that was the only bit I wish I had filmed. They were squaring off with Charlie and Peril. And from where we were, all you saw was <laughs> Effie's head pop up, Crimson Mask with a ladder in his hand. Oh, and yeah. And you yeah. knew it was over he threw that ladder in the ring and it just turned to a hardcore match from there oh it was great great way to wrap up the the show um billy ended up squaring off with thrusty against mason's mercs and he helped them hit the, the pins and he helped them and throughout the fight and it was great it was a great match i i, I never expected that level of storytelling to start and end that beautifully in one match. It was great. Wonderful. This one ended in a big way with Effie. Uh, had the package pile driver on Para, who is a massive human being. It was very scary. Pile drivers scare me in the Indies. <laughs> um, and then it, it kind of was like a moment where everybody kind of rolled out of the ring and let Seek have a, a, a coast to coast on Paro and then a big, a big leg drop off the ladder and Huge. all three of them pinned but some i don't know if you want to talk about this or i'll talk about this there's a thing in the 80s that they used to say used to if you listen to bruce pritchard they'd say hogan must pose so you can't end the show on time you have to end it early so that the fans can see hogan hulk hogan pose they want to take the picture of of him and seek got that moment yeah seek got the hogan may pose effie and alley cat rolled out of the ring they played their music, got their pictures, stood on the ladder, and had the whole to the choreography. I can't do oh. it, but very significant ending for a person whose name is on the show to roll out and say, "Yeah, no, that's stage that's a, is yours." That's a good point. Any. <laughs>
One could say, oh, he's going to go back and take care of that bleeding problem. No, he sure didn't because he came back out for meet and greets with the mask on. He oh, that's awesome. There was there was free merchandise ringside, and it was all of Effie's um, <laughs> plasma. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, it was. Uh, people can have opinions about promoters. Um, Effie's main job at the end of the day is to pay his bills. If he has to be a little bit more of a businessman in order to do so, he can't fault him on that. But that doesn't mean he's incapable of the awesome displays he put on today bringing you know some social issues into the light giving dark seek the the spotlight you know uh, and just really kind of coming out and cutting it up and he wasn't so much worried about slinging merch when they came out they even made an announcement and said bussy isn't slinging merch after the show they're just going to come take pictures so i mean he, he wasn't that person that he needed to be in order to pay his it, it bills at the end of the day he was that person you needed to be if this was your first queer show with Effie. And it was awesome. Uh, it was it's great. great. I think Effie's hysterical. And he has his little social moments. And, and that's equally as important. Yeah. When I say sold out, I did some pans of the crowd. We were standing room. The show was sold out. I mean, it was packed. Mm -hmm. Very colorful audience. Yes. Lots of wacky queer people. Uh, and it was great. Probably spilled over with people who are ready to go to the next show. You know what I noticed with the GCW crowd is when Dark Sheik shows up to a GCW event, they love her. Regardless of... I, I mean, I feel like if you're a transphobe, you're not going to love her. Maybe you don't know she's trans. Maybe you do. Either way, GCW loves her. And I feel like some of these people may not have considered themselves allies or may not have considered themselves anywhere on the queer spectrum and just wanted to see Chic or just wanted to see a good GCW show and showed up to Big Gay Brunch and probably left there thinking, dang, okay, maybe I need to come to these more often, you know, because it's a little bit of something for everybody. It was great. Absolutely. I, it, was, it was a profound experience for me because I never would have thought a queer wrestling show could be empowering which it felt empowering it was great loved it loved every minute of it on that i'm gonna wrap up unless you have something you want to say uh yet again another fantastic show from this weekend so that was this morning um big gay brunch huge success now we're gonna go and watch wrestlemania and come back and talk about it so we'll see you later Thank <laughs> you.